Hey guys, I have a real exciting episode for you today. I interviewed an attorney um, that's talk, talk, talking to you about intellectual properties, but she's going to get into some really, really deep conversations. I think you're going to love this episode because if you're a small business out there and you don't think you need any type of IP, I really, really need you to listen to this episode because I'm thinking it's going to change your mind. So without further ado, enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to Marketing Solutions for Local Law Firms, the podcast that provides you with all the latest digital marketing tools, tips, and strategies you will need to implement in order to stay ahead of your competition. If you are looking to substantially increase your caseload in the next six months, this is the podcast for you. And now, here's the host of our show, the local business guy himself, Frank Deming. Hello, 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 everyone. This is Frank Deming, the local business guy. Welcome to another episode of Marketing Solutions for local law firms. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Happy hump day. I hope you guys are having a rocking, rocking week thus far. Today, I have the privilege, as I said in the preemptor, to introduce you to yet another attorney because it's Meet the Attorney episode, as I do at least twice a month. Um... So I can expose you to as many attorneys as I can so you can see what other what kind of great services they are providing. Today's episode is no different because I'm going to introduce you to the great Nancy Delane. How's it going, Nancy? It's going just fine, Frank. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, Nancy, I said a couple of things already t- about you in the pre-intro, but in your own words, who are you and what do you do? My name is Nancy Delane, and it is my privilege to help you nurture your mind child. Now, what might a mind child be? Good question. Well, <laughs> I know it's a good question. People, people are always asking me that question. What's a mind child? <laughs> so my response to this is think about what comes out of your mind. What does come out of your mind? Ideas, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you have an idea... That idea in and of itself, while it sits in your head, is not something I can do anything about. Okay, I am not the thought police. I cannot read your mind. Nobody else can read your mind when it's not expressed in your in and when it's not. Well, while while that idea is still in your head, it's simply not protectable. However, yeah. once you express that idea, and there are many ways to express an idea, it may become protectable. If you express that idea in terms of an invention, it becomes protectable as a patent or a trade secret. Uh, maybe sometimes both, and they do work. They do work very nicely in tandem. Believe it or not, a patent is an exercise in disclosure. A trade secret is an exercise in keep your mouth shut. But <laughs> you can you can make them work together. Um, if you express your idea in terms of some sort of a work of authorship, a book, a piece of music, a sculpture, a painting. Uh, a pantomime, a dance, uh, whatever you know, something, something that something that qualifies as a work of authorship. Then all of a sudden, you're into the world of copyright. And I will point out that copyright is a very powerful means of protection of protecting things. There's a lady in England who went from being a welfare mom to being a billionaire hmm. uh, by by. Uh, through through mainly through copyright. She also has some trademark. Her name is J.K. Rowling. I'm sure you've heard of her. Yes. Um, and if you express your idea in terms of something that increases your business goodwill, uh, then then you're into it. Then you're into the 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 wild and woolly wor- uh, world of trademarks. Hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. Awesome. So, uh, your the name of your firm is the Lane Law Office, correct? That's correct. So is it just you, Nancy? It is just me. I am the chief lawyer and I am the chief janitor. I'm working to change that. <laughs> how, long, how long have you been in, in, uh, in, in practice? I graduated from law school in 2003 after spending 20 years as a technical writer before I went to law school. Um, and I passed the, passed the New York State Bar right out of the, right out of the gate. 
Uh, and then I sat for the patent bar, passed that right out of the gate. So now what I do is a subset of technical writing, in which I have a master's degree, and I write uh, I write patents and contracts all day long. Interesting. So so basically, you're, you're solely an, an, an IP or intellectual property, if you will, attorney, right? You I also know. do some business law. Okay. Um, you know, contra- contracts. Um, and there, there are some interesting, there's some interesting intersects between intellectual property and business law. Um, for example, um, well, for example, contracts, contract, mm-hmm. go- contracts govern the way intellectual property gets used, gets, gets licensed, gets shared, gets, um, gets uh, disseminated. Gotcha. Uh, so so I, I spend a fair amount of time writing contracts uh, and reading contracts and evaluating contracts. So. I can I could definitely see the correlation between those two things. Um, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna head off and I have a couple of questions about you because your 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 uh line of law is is it, it well maybe for you it is, but for me it's not very common. Um and, and you know, probably some listeners it's probably common for them too, but you never know. There's some people who may not. So I'm gonna ask you some questions here that are pretty basic. Uh, maybe to use basic, but maybe some people will need to know uh, about these. So, so my first question is actually three questions in one. Okay. See if you can rattle them off real quick for me. Uh, the first question I have for you is, number one, what is a patent? What is a copyright? And what is a trademark? Uh, the reason I'm asking you that is because I recently just um, did a whole trademark on my on my logo and slogan. Um, and I was really confused with the documentation, but anyway, so, uh, (laughs) if you could just help me out and, and tell me what are the differences between those three? Sure. Uh, going in order, a patent is all of these things are nothing but bundles of rights. Mm. That's what they are in actuality. The question is what bundles of rights are they? A patent is a bundle of rights. It's granted by the federal government. Uh, you go, you get a patent through the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office in the United States, and every country has its pat- has its patent office. Sometimes they're combined with the trademark office. Sometimes they're not. Um, but the USPTO, uh, uh, when when you when you receive an issued patent from the USPTO, it is good within the United States, and it gives it gives the patent owner the right to exclude others from making, using, selling offering for sale, or importing that patented invention. Notice I did not say it gives you the right to do the invention. It gives you the right to exclude others from doing that invention. And that's an important distinction because a patent Mm. is basically a monopoly. We Uh have laws called antitrust laws. Patents Mm -hmm. run afoul of antitrust laws all the time, but a patent is guaranteed in the body, not in the body of the U.S. Constitution. It's not often some amendment like free speech is. Mm. Okay, it's in the body of the Constitution. Same is true of copyright. Okay, Um, but a patent, we have to we have to kind of reconcile the patent monopoly with the fact that we really don't like monopolies. Okay, yeah. Um, and we do we do that by limiting the term of the patent, and it is a strictly limited term. That patent is good for, uh, depending on the type of patent, it's either fourteen or twenty years. Most of them are good for twenty years after the date of uh, after the date you file the patent application. And mm. there, there are some extensions that are available, but they usually have to do with with some agency holding the patent at, with some federal agency holding the patent application up. Like, for example, a drug patent would would have to pass muster with the FDA and that 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 would that process would 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 stay the patent the, the time frame for the patent uh the patent application but um yeah it's a, a patent is a bundle of rights that allows you to that gives you the right to exclude others from making using selling offering for sale or importing an invention a quick copyright. question quick question before you go to copyright yeah is a patent only on tangible things like a patent uh, piece of like material, uh, yeah, material, for instance, on a clothing line or or or, or maybe a, a, a particular component a component that goes on computer? Is that a patent stuff or is that? Those are those are usual. Yeah. Um, tangible things are the things that are generally protected by patent. Gotcha. But there are intangible things that are protected by. <clears throat> excuse me, protected by patent as well. Um, <laughs> 
things like processes and procedures can be protected by patent. For example, um, as long as that intangible thing transforms something that's tangible. For example, I, mm. have, a, I have a client who has a patent, and I got her this patent, and I'm very proud of the fact that I got her this patent, that takes <laughs> a group insurance product that's used for traveler's insurance for people who are traveling for things like uh, like uh, like the Peace Corps. OK, they're volunteers going off going off on on some on some do good mission. OK. Mm. And usually these these insurance products are group things and you can't modify them. Uh, but my client came up with a method, a, 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 a procedure for modifying that group insurance thing and allowing individuals to modify to to have to have the equivalent of an indi- of an individual policy under the group. Mm, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Wow. That's, I mean, that in and of itself, you need an attorney for. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> she knew it. <laughs> oh, awesome. So I, I cut you off there. You were on, on a roll to talk about copyright. So go ahead. Okay. <laughs> copyrights. Copyrights give, copyrights give an author, you know, somebody who creates a work of authorship, certain rights. They have the right to dis- to uh, to um, copy their work. They have the right to distribute their work. They have the right to perform their work. And, and these are exclusive rights. So when you go online and you go, oh, that's a really cool artwork that I'm seeing on Facebook. I'm going to copy that. Mm. Copyright infringement. You don't have to profit from the copy. You can, All you need to for copyright infringement is a, reg- a valid copyright. And a substantially similar copy. That's it. There's nothing so, about money in there. So copyright can be an image. It can also be content. I, it I'm can assuming. be content. Absolutely. Images, sculptures, uh, uh, ballets. You know, George Balanchine held held copyright in in much of in much of the uh, in much of the uh, New York City ballet um, okay. repertoire because he designed it. So when you go to some of these websites talking about images, um, because this recently happened, actually, uh, you know, and and, and the image says royalty free. That means you can download that without any copyright. You don't have to. The copyright attaches. The copyright is there. You can download it royalty. You can download it and possibly use it royalty free, depending on the license that, that, that that particular website is granting. Mm. And you don't have to pay royalties for it because that particular author has granted the image <laughs> to the public domain. We'll be back after a quick break. Hey, attorney, are you running a lot of digital ads or maybe even SEO, Facebook ads, et cetera, et cetera, and you're not getting the results that you're hoping for? Have you been trying to generate leads online. And although you are getting some results, you're thinking, man, something's got to be wrong because I should be getting a lot more attention. Well, if that's you, I want to help you out. Give us a call, 888-416-7752. I'd love to sit down, find out a little bit more about your business and, and see if we can help you. Now, Even before you do that and before we sit down and talk, I'd love for you to go to our website, lbmsllc.com. Once you type that, you're going to see on the top right-hand corner of the page a little green button that says free online report. I want you to click on that button, fill out the form, and you will be emailed within 24 hours a free online report as to see exactly what's going on in your business how are you showing up online? And that's the first step to be able to decipher exactly what's going on in your business. So if you would love a free analysis and to help us to get you to the next level, take that action right now. Download the free online report and that will be the first step. Then give us a call at 888-416-7752. And we will schedule some time together. So with that, I'm going to bring you right back to the show. 
Yeah, like 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 a uh, ice stock or whatever. Uh, ice stock, ice stock is not always free. You 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 okay? No, no, no. I know it's not free, but I mean, you, so I, let's say I pay a subscription for ice stock and I get all the images, so I'm I'm good. I can I can right. Download. When once you pay that subscription fee, but what you're doing when you pay that subscription fee, that's a licensing fee, and. Istock then turns around and pays, you know, they, they collect they collect the the artists, the artists fee for the use of the work, plus a plus a you know a, a commission for themselves for 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 uh for hosting uh, it for uh you know getting the getting the work getting the work out there and and getting right. it sold. Gotcha. Gotcha. Interesting. Now, how about a slogan? Can you copyright a slogan? You cannot. A slogan okay. is actually too short. If you look at my slogan here, nurture your mind, child. Mm-hmm. That is not a copyright symbol at the end of it. I know you can't read it very well. That's a registered that's trademark. A of, that's a registered trademark. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Interesting. Interesting. Slogans, very confusing. Slogans tend to define, slogans tend to be used in conjunction with business goodwill. Mm. They fly the friendly skies. Where's yes. that you know where that comes from. Fly the friendly side. Isn't that United? United. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or just do it. Oh, that's that's Nike. Yeah. That's Nike. That's right. Or um, or uh, let's see what other. Well, oh, where's the beef? Remember that one? That's an old one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where's the beef? <laughs> that's that old yeah, that lady. Yeah, Burger that, King. That was a great um, commercial. Those are those those you know, and you notice how quickly you associated those things, and that's the point of trademark. Okay, to get to get people to associate the slogan or the image with the business, with the source of that good or service in the stream of commerce and just Mm. that association immediately. Gotcha. Gotcha. So we just went into trademark without even asking. (laughs) Okay, so um, now, you know, before. Before I ask you the next question, how does all that stuff work together? Like, for instance, um, you know, you can patent so i so basically if i have a product like like for instance this uh this mug here that you're okay. looking at I, I want to patent that i can patent the, the mug the, the material yeah, that's yeah, in the that, mug. that particular mug is probably not patentable but uh right but, right um, you know if if i were to if i were to um if i were to if i were to come up with a new computer design mm. okay i could patent my new computer design mm-hmm then I'm going to have to have documentation to describe that new computer design. That's copyright. Then mm-hmm. I'm going to have to name that new computer design something. You know, it, uh, it'll be called. Uh, it's not going to be called Apple because mm-hmm. that one's already out there. But um, I might call it. I might call it Nutjob Computer Design. Okay. Right. And right. Nutjob would be would be a, would be a trademark, trademark. For that computer design. So then you go full circle there. So now you're totally protected. Yeah. So now you mentioned the the amount of years for a patent. You said it could go up to like twenty years. You said or ten years. Um, a patent, a patent. Um, yeah, a pat, a utility patent, which is the type of patent that we usually think of when we think of a patent. That's the you know, that's the widget, the better mouse trap. The the uh, mm-hmm. my my client who who had the had the process um, to to do the insurance thing was uh, that was a utility patent. Okay, gotcha. the, those are twenty years from the date from the date of filing the application. Gotcha. Okay. They are not renewable. You cannot renew a patent. Oh, really? The same argument applies. Antitrust patents are monopolies. We don't like monopolies. So then you got to do something else after the patent. Well, is... yeah, this is where trade secret comes in. Okay, mm, uh, gotcha. you have to when you when you file that patent application, you have to you must disclose the best mode of making and using that invention as of the date you filed that application. Very, gotcha. important, very important words there. Okay. Gotcha. Um, the date you file that application, mm. that, that's the cutoff date. If you make some improvement on that invention the day after you file the application, and that improvement is something that you can, you know, kind of keep under your hat and not tell it, tell the world about. Mm-hmm that improvement becomes a trade secret and by having that improvement in place on that invention you can effectively extend the life of the patent hmm. interesting because you know Tricks. yeah people are going to know how yeah. to make, build, make and build what you disclosed but that trade secrets there tricks and of the trade you have 
you have the uh you know you you've got the uh you've got you've got kind of an upper hand on the competition once the once the um once the patent expires also um you will have trademarked your invention you will have given it a name you will have mm-hmm. registered the trademark and 20 years is a long time yeah it's a long time a long time to you know you you will have built that brand up in 20 years so oh, yeah. patent you expires you can continue to market the invention under mm-hmm. your brand and you'll, you know, again, you'll have a little bit of a market edge there because you're you're the familiar name. The first name, yeah. Um, what about copyright? Is there like a is there a period for that? There is, there is. Um, copyright is very long lasting, and it also is not renewable, but it ex- it extends from the life of the author plus ninety five years. So why would you want to renew it unless you're a company like Disney? The life of the author plus 25 so 95 years. years. 95 years. 95 years. You know. So basically it's a lifetime. More than. Yeah. yeah. It's the lifetime of the author plus the author's grandchildren. The grandchildren, yeah. Uh, I happen to know a little bit about trademark because I uh, I went through the process. But why don't you tell me what's the, uh, what is that uh, limit? You know, what's, how long is a trademark good for? Trademarks are good for, well, it depends on where you're registering them. Okay, trademark trademarks are are uh, are a creature of both federal and state law. <clears throat> mm. If you register federally, which means that you are in interstate commerce, you're engaging in commerce between between at least two states. Okay, uh, and you 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 go to the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, and you they they give you you know they they register your trademark for you, and then you have. You have uh, five years between years five between years five and six. You must re-register the trademark with proof of continued use of that trademark. Okay. Um, then again, between years nine and ten, you must re-register that trademark with proof of continued use. After that, it's every ten years. But you know, you you can renew a trademark, and you can renew that trademark for an unlimited period of time as long yeah. as you. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, that was the letter we got when when uh, when I filed. Yeah, so I mean, if you look at my logo, you'll see the R on it now. So I, I trademarked the logo and the slogan. So congratulations! I did the lot. same thing. There's a little R in a circle there, by, next to my logo, and a little R in a circle there next to my next to my uh, my tagline. Yeah, that's a great. It's a beautiful thing. Um, all right, so I mean, this is all interesting because. I never to be I'm gonna be straight up honest with you. I never thought it was a need for it until I ran into someone similar to yourself. Uh, <laughs> but um I wanna I wanna ask you a question uh that I asked this person. I'm just kind of curious if you answer to this. Uh they I just want to know like why should you even bother to protect um your 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 company's intellectual property what's what's the you know what's the big deal about it well there's several big deals first of all there's the pride of ownership it is yours Mm -hmm. okay you it's especially with something like trademark okay um you want to distinguish yourself in the marketplace you want to be unique you want to you know you don't want you know you know there are piles of podcasters out there frank and you don't want to be confused with with uh, with with uh, with uh, with another podcaster who does a show similar to yours. You want you want that you want the you want the two names to be to be um, to be different enough so that so that Frank Deming's podcast is very different from, say, Joe Schmo's podcast, mm-hmm. and where Joe Schmo and Frank Deming both interview lawyers. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, and you don't want people to get confused between Frank Deming and Joe Schmo. You don't want the you you know you you want those two things to be separated. Um, Makes sense. You know, and uh, there's value in that. Um, you know, trademark trademarks are licensable. Uh, you know, and if you ha- if you put a if you put a system with a trademark, all of a sudden you've got a franchise, and there's a very there there's something that can be a very valuable commodity. I mean, you know, I. I I'm going to pick on my favorite example. There was a hamburger stand in California in the 1950s, and it developed a trademark. It had golden arches, and it had, mm-hmm. you know it was run by the McDonald's brothers. And a guy named Ray Kroc came along and shook about the scruff, turned it into a multi-billion internet, multi-billion dollar international corporation. Mm-hmm. You know that's trademark. That's all trademark. Gotcha. 
that's a, and that's one reason to protect. You know, it, it's it's profitable, and you want you know to you want to keep it yours. Okay. Now, let, let before you before you continue, what happens if you don't protect? Let's say okay, let's 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 keep the McDonald's example. You know, got you know he's got all of these. Uh, I'm assuming he's patented the patties, right? Uh, I have no idea whether he patented the patties or not, but, uh, but uh, <laughs> let's assume he did. Let's, let's say assume. he patented his process. His process, yeah. His process for making the patties. For making the patties and all that kind of stuff. And so let, let's just assume back in the 50s, he didn't do all this stuff. He didn't know someone like yourself to tell him, hey, you should do this. What What's the worst that could happen that could have happened to him? That means someone can just come up and steal it? And claim it to be his or hers, or that, that can happen. I actually have a, I actually have a couple of clients who are in that situation right now. They failed to register their marks, and other people are using their marks or something con- confusingly similar to their marks, and it's a problem. It's hmm. a problem. Hmm. Um, one of them, I don't know, you know, and I don't know if we're going to be filing a an op, a, a, a cancellation for the for the mark that got registered out from under the other one. I'm pretty sure we're not. Um, hmm. you know, th- those folks are in the process of coming up with, with other, um, with other trademarks, um, because they're fairly new in business, but the one that, you know, the one I'm thinking might, might do well to, to, uh, to, uh, challenge the existence of the registered mark, uh, you know, she, she's been in business for a while and this registered mark came in and just came out and, you know, uh, registered out from under her because she hadn't registered her mark and yeah. now she now she faces the distinct possibility of losing the right to use her to use her own trademark and she's been using it longer than this other comp than this other company has so hmm. yeah I, I can see the argument there i mean anything can happen if you come up with a really good idea and your brand is really you know, making inroads out there. Yeah. You, you, you want to protect it, especially since, you know, someone can actually come. No one ever thinks about that. I I can tell you, I never thought about that. And I just thought, Hey, you know, why would someone want my, my name? Why would someone want my brand? You the know last I mean? piece of litigation I did, I am not a litigator, but the last piece of litigation I did was between two construction companies. Mm-hmm. One of them is a well known construction company that is in my particular area. The other one is a lesser known construction company that was one county over. The name the owners named their companies after themselves. Okay. And they both had the same last name. Mm. So we had one really good company X and another not so good company X. So mm. people were starting to people were starting to confuse the not so good company X with the good company X. And the good company X was actually losing market share because of this, because all of a sudden, all of a sudden there was a, there was a, um, there was a bunch of buildings out there that were constructed not to company X's standards. Stand, standards. So. Hmm. Yeah. I could see that be, could be a problem. <laughs> yeah. So um, out of curiosity, I have a lot of people who listen to me who are who are attorneys just like yourself, but I have another uh, audience that are small business owners mm-hmm. uh, that 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 listen to this, and 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 I know I know they're probably scratching their heads like, okay, this is interesting. You could protect it, but businesses, as you know, Nancy, are all about making money, right? Mm-hmm. So, just curious. How can how can like I make money? How can another small business make money, you know, from intellectual properties? We'll be back after a quick break. Hello there, listeners. If you're an attorney and you would love to be a guest on the show so you can promote your services to people that listen to the show and, and beyond, Give us a call at 888-416-7752 or send us an email at podcast at 
podcastingtheparacast.com. One of my associates in the podcasting team will send you an email and connect with you, schedule some time, send you the podcast intake form and schedule you to be interviewed on the show. So if that's something that you really would want to do, go ahead and take one of those actions and we'll take it from there. So until then, enjoy the rest of the show. Again, depending on the type of intellectual property, okay? Patents, you Mm -hmm. can license them. You can sell them outright if you want to. Um, and But, you know, there are all kinds of ways to license a patent. Um, and, you know, you're, you're going to get money either way. If, you know, if, if, somebody want, if somebody wants to purchase your invention, they, can, they will pay you money for that. that, that mm-hmm. Sometimes they pay you a lot of money for that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. If, if, uh, if somebody wants to use your invention, but not necessarily own all the patent rights to it, then they will license your invention. And you can, you can write a license. A license is a contract. Okay. You can write it however you want. You can, you can limit the contract. You can give them all, you can give them all exclusive rights. Okay. That that's basically abdicating your patent, but you can also say, okay, you can have, you have the right to use this invention in New York state for five years. You can limit it in terms of geography and time. Hmm. Okay. You can limit it in terms of, of um, who gets the, who gets the patent, right? You know, if, 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 uh, if the licensing company goes out of business, what happens to that? Does it revert to the, does it revert to the, uh, to the patent owner? Or maybe, maybe there's some clause in there that says, that says if, if, uh, if the licensing company goes, the, the company that licenses the patent goes out of business, there's a successor company that's, that's all lined up to, to take it over. You know, mm-hmm. there are all kinds of ways to write this thing. Okay. Um, the same is true with trademark. You know, franchise companies make a chunk of change through license, through the, through the licensing of their mark. Mm. Okay. When you pay a franchise fee to somebody, to McDonald's, right. and, you know, that, that's an extreme example. McDonald's charges a massive franchise fee mm. um, and not all franchise companies do. But when you pay that franchise fee, you are licensing the use of the mark and you're paying for that for the for the right to use that trademark and that system. Right. Okay? Um with copyright, when you when you purchase a book, when you purchase a art piece of artwork, you know, that's through copyright that you are that you are you're you're licensing the you you know you don't own the copyright in the book when you buy and, and I'm going to pick on JK Rowling again when you buy Harry Potter, you do not own the copyright in the book. You mm. own a copy of the book and you have Co- okay? correct. And JK, don't think JK Rowling doesn't get a cut cut of every first sale of Harry Potter that's out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Interesting. So, all right. So those are those are all good uh, examples of how to make money on this thing. Now, cu- out of curiosity, what are the um what what's if if I was to start a new business today, you know? And, and, you know, it's, I don't know, it's a, it's a software company. I'm a software guy. So let's, let's go with that. Okay, we'll go with um, software. It's, a, it's a software company. It's a SaaS company. You, you're familiar okay. with that yep. term, right? Yep. Awesome. Sure. Software as a service. Got it. Right. Right. I'm, a, I'm starting a SaaS company. What advice as an attorney, as an IP attorney, you would give me starting a SaaS company? Don't patent anything. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> When, when when software software can be patented, okay. okay as long as as long as it transforms something, mm-hmm. but when you write a software patent, you must disclose source code. Oh, really? Yeah, you must disclose the best mode of making and using your invention as of the date you file that patent application. That means source code. Okay, mm. so you're giving people that you're keeping you're giving people the keys to the kingdom when you patent a piece of software. Hmm. Okay. Um, but you know, if you, if you instead you compile this source code into you compile this source code into object code, and you do whatever magic you do to keep people from being able to reverse compile it, mm-hmm. uh, then you then you've got a really nice trade secret that'll that'll last for however long you want it to last. Okay. Mm. Um, by all means, invest in trademarks. Okay. Be clever with your name. Do not name things according to what they are. Okay. 
For example, there's a tree out there. Okay, mm-hmm. it grows fruit. And this fruit is purported, it's red usually, and it is purported to keep doctors away. Mm-hmm. It does not have chips. It does not have microbuses. It does not have ports. It does not play music. Apples grow on trees. They don't run, they are not computers. So if you, if you know, name your, name your, and yet Apple is a very strong trademark for a computer company. Yeah. Okay. So name your, name your uh, software, you know, don't, don't call it Frank's software. Don't call it, uh, you know, Frank's, Frank's SAS. No, don't, don't do that. You know, just, you know, name, name it, find, find some clever name for it and, uh, and, uh, and name it that. And if you can make up a word to name it, by all means, please do. Strongest trademark in the business. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's funny you say that because when I first started my business, I called it, ready for this? Deming Inc. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, if, if, you, if, you, name, if you name your software Deming Software, that's okay because, because um, Deming has absolutely nothing to do with the software and what it does. Okay. Okay. So, so I could have left it like that then. You could have, yeah. <laughs> um, this has all been great, Nancy. Um, quick question for you. What is the website? If someone wanted to get a hold of you, wanted to find out about um, all about your services, what's, what's the website? Well, if you're watching the podcast, you can see it on the bottom of my little frame here. It's ipattorneyfirm.com. IPattorneyfirm.com. I will put that in the show notes. So that's not a problem. I will also link out to your LinkedIn. I, I believe you and I are connected on LinkedIn. I would like to show, um, have other people connect you on LinkedIn. Now, I, I am assuming, I know you're in the state of New York, but you can do IP work for anyone throughout the U.S., correct? My most distant client is in Dubai. Oh, so throughout the world, not just the U.S. Not just the U.S. As long as the world is trying to come into the U.S., I can ha- I can help them. Okay. Oh, okay. You know, I, I can't I can't do I I can't file a patent in the United Arab Republic. I'm not admitted there. I gotcha. can't even file a patent in Canada. I'm not admitted there either. But gotcha, I am gotcha, in gotcha. the United States, and if somebody wants to come into the United States with a piece of intellectual property, I can help them do that. Awesome. Um, as you know, this is a marketing show, Nancy. Out of I mean, out of high level, how what do you do to to get most of your clients? What's what's your not not a secret, but I mean, what's oh, what's, what's your I, method? I appear on podcasts like this one, Frank. <laughs> um, gotcha. What else do I do. I uh, I'm fairly active on LinkedIn. I have a YouTube channel. Um, mm-hmm. I have a I have a TikTok channel, which pretty much duplicates my YouTube channel, mm-hmm. uh, but you know, different strokes for different folks. That's smart. Um, and I, That's very and, smart. Uh, and uh, you know, I post I post like five videos a week on on uh, on YouTube and TikTok, and and then I share those videos on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. There you go. That's awesome. As a marketer. I am so happy to hear you say that. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. So this this uh, this pretty much puts an end to the to 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 the episode. But before I let you go, um, is there anything that I did not ask you that you think will benefit the audience? If you have an invention, do not talk to anybody about it until you talk to your intellectual property lawyer. The reason I say that is because there is a statute in the United States. It's called 35 United States Code 102B. And we call this the 102B bar. The 102B bar says that once you disclose an invention, you have one year, not one year in one day, one year to file the patent application or you donate that donation, you donate that invention to the public domain. You, it will not be patentable after that time. So well, what what if someone signs an NDA? Doesn't matter. D- d- talk to your patent lawyer before you disclose to anybody. Gotcha. And if you don't have a patent lawyer, you speak to Nancy and all her information is on the show notes. Go there right now. If you have an idea and you want to protect that idea, reach out to Nancy Delane because you will be well served. 
So that will put an end to this episode. This has been a great episode. Thanks, Nancy, for coming. This has been Frank Deming, the local business guy, and you've just been blessed by the great Nancy Deming. Take care, everyone, and until next week. Thanks for listening to another episode of Marketing Solutions for Local Law Firms, the podcast that provides you with all the latest digital marketing tools, tips, and strategies you will need to implement in order to stay ahead of your competition. If you would like to know more about the topic we discussed in the show today, reach out to Frank and his team at 888-416-7752 and schedule a discovery call with one of the marketing consultants. If you'd like to be a guest on our show, send an email to podcast at lbmsllc.com and we will put you on the schedule. With that being said, until next week, make it a successful digital marketing day. Peace out.